Welcome back to the sweatshop. In today's video, we're going to be working on this 2001 Subaru Outback. What we're doing in today's video is we're going to be replacing the front driver's side CV shaft. The reason being is because the inner boot is destroyed and has crapped all over the place. Yes, it is a familiar sight with the Subarus of these years and some of the newer ones up until about, I'd say about 2006. 2008 is when they remedy that issue and it's still not completely fixed it can happen from time to time but the boots did get much better that being said how do you know well say you're reaching around in the engine bay for whatever reason around where the cv shaft is and you get a nasty grease stain on your hand or on your arm that generally is a good indicator that you have a cv shaft that has taken a poop all over your car not fun it sucks because grease from a cv shaft does not come up very easily and can drive you absolutely mad trying to get it off of your skin or whatever it has touched bright clean does work pretty good however no one wants to waste six cans of brake clean of course with the prices of brake clean today no one can really afford it i think we're up at what seven dollars a can or some stupidness for a big can anyhow make sure you get yourself a decent joint uh, one that is of quality essentially you don't want to get the cheapest thing they, t they tend to have really crappy quality boots which rupture and tend to dry rot pretty fast uh, this one here is a gsp joint which yeah you know what i've had them before they come i think they're a supplier for a number of different manufacturers the box says api on it which is auto parts international nonetheless just get a decent joint uh, get it from a reputable supplier that way if there are any issues that tissues won't solve you can go back to them and nag them for a new joint or warranty uh, with this particular car and foresters that are older as well as impressas you will end up with a little clip like this you can reuse the old one however sometimes they do get damaged in the process of taking them out very rarely if they are seized to hell and of course being that i am in the rust belt it is a high potential another thing you want to make sure your cv shaft comes with is that guy there because that thing can also turn into a nightmare when it is completely rotted you gotta love the rust belt it is the gift my friends that just keeps on giving uh, of course it's not the uh, types of gifts that you want but hey you never get what you want right if you did i'd be a millionaire and be living in another country nonetheless it is time for us to go ahead and install this wonderful cv shaft if you're going to partake in this endeavor at home make sure you do yourself a big favor and employ the use of jack stands because a pancake human is one that is of no use and one that is no longer alive so if you want to do the job successfully make sure you do it safely make sure you watch the full length of video that being said before we get started with today's video do me a big favor hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos okay let's go ahead put this thing up in the air i'll show you where this thing has let go and pooped all over the car and then i'll start showing you exactly what you need to do to complete the job that there friends is cv grease the nightmares of many a mechanic i hate getting cv shaft grease on my fingers because it gets everywhere it's like non-vulcanized rubber in the silicone tube it's just oh god once you touch it and you make the mistake of getting it somewhere it is there to annoy the hell out of your life uh, anyhow be very careful if you are going to clean that stuff up make sure you don't just spray it in the driveway what you want to do is take a rag clean off the bulk of the grease and chunks and all that stuff with a rag dispose of that rag responsibly go ahead then and wipe it off with a rag that is soaked in brake clean and then you can use brake clean to get rid of the rest of the residue also put a bucket underneath your cv shaft because grease my friends stains like you would not believe and man you don't want to save yourself two or three hundred bucks in labor only to have your wife want to kick you down the flight of stairs so yeah don't open yourself up to that friends you know do yourself a favor and watch the video, you know, learn what not to do or just pay to have it done. That's always best. Makes your life so much easier and well, ours so much harder, but we get paid to do it. So what to do, right? Not enough, might I add. But anyhow, I'm just in the complaining mood today because, you know, once you have a call with our useless government uh, up here in Canada, you 
you really did just mm, grind your goddamn gears. Let me tell you. When I tackle these joints, I can't remember whether it is the automatic or the standard, but I know in the past I have been able, I know for sure on the Forester I've done it, and I think it was a manual gearbox, but I have been able to sneak the joint out of place without me having to take apart the bowl joint. Uh, all I gotta do is just smack that pin out and then I usually pry on it and I should be able to get enough just to get it separated. But if not, we'll be separating the bowl joint like we do on all the newer ones and getting it out of place. Yeah, the pin was kind of annoying sometimes, but they're generally never really an issue dependent upon if you lose your stock one. Some of the old school joints that we used to get didn't have a uh, tapered end, which you know, simple enough if you catch it, grind it down. But if you don't, you're trying to hammer it in. It could drive you nuts. So do yourself a favor. Make sure that the replacement or the stock one, make sure the stock one's good. Just reuse that. And if you are going to use the replacement, make sure it is tapered so that you don't drive yourself insane trying to get it into the hole. Instead of me telling you all about this job through you know, my wonderful, lovely voice. Let's go ahead and start doing some crap. Uh, no time like the present to see whether my guesstimation's right. Let's get a punch. And I think quarter inch or less will do that there. And then we'll smash it out and see if we get that CV out. Get yourself a 730 seconds punch. And smash, -a, smash, -a, smash. -a. Yeah, see? So easy. In case you're wondering why it is I like the stock one, this one is the stock one and you can see here it's kind of, well that zigzag pattern there basically helps it, gives it more friction and that keeps it in place. Full disclosure, this guy here is a Texas car, spent most of its life there and has only been in the Rust Belt for the last three years I think. So I don't expect everything to be a pain in the ass, well really anything. Now what you're going to do is simply just separate that guy there. Oh, it might be my, it might be this wonderful guy that I can get it off on. I don't know. Let's try it. Let's try it. I can't remember if I twisted the suspension or not. Oh, whatever. Fuck. Just pray, pray, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know. We're going to end up doing that bull joint. Eh? Yeah, we're not going to be able to get that guy off. We're going to end up doing the bull joint. So, yeah, let's go over now to the wheel and take it all apart. 19 mil. Thirty-two mil. Of course, you can see here how wonderful the CV nut is. It's basically brand new because I sprayed this thing with white lithium grease three years ago when it came up from Texas. I don't know why anybody would leave Texas to come over here, but whatever. Ah, she's still usable. Look at that. Not an ounce of rust anywhere on that thing. Yeah. Pretty damn good. All right, we got to take off our bow joint. Just a few things I want to point out here to you is this here is an aftermarket joint. I don't like this style very much because it usually has a hex in order to torque this thing. It has a hex key that's cut out of the center of the bow joint shaft. Sometimes uh, this one doesn't feel like it has anything. Nonetheless, I like having a castle nut and cotter pin set up this here. I don't like very much because it's usually a lock washer of some sort that sucks or lock nut that sucks. Um, anyhow, if you have the stock bowl, it'll be a 19. This thing here is a 17. Oh, well, this is not the stock nut and that is a stock bowl joint. What's the deal here, guy? Something's going on there. Ooh, looks like someone did something that's not supposed to be done. Looks like this thread on this is kind of galled up. Well, looks like some hackery has taken place. There is what should be a slot here for a cotter pin. This is not the appropriate nut. So I'm going to search around and see if I can remedy this. Hopefully we find a nut. Thread doesn't feel right. It looks like it's actually been stripped away. We might end up getting a bowl joint. God damn. I'm not up for doing a bullet joint today, so that'll be the end of this fucking video, but let's see. Okay, so um, we're going to determine what happens with this bullet joint a little bit later on, but uh, for now, we're going to power through this uh, CV shaft. Uh, you're going to get yourself a bullet joint separator tool like this, or, well, a joint separator tool. You're going to tap it into place. Nice and slowly. Now, the key to success here with this joint tool is making sure your rubber boot doesn't get punctured by it, because that can happen. 
You just want to slide it around the end here. All right, now let's put some pressure on it. Should pop off, hopefully, relatively easily. Yes, that's always the hope, but you never know. Now, get yourself a ginormous pry bar. Stick it in the hole. And pry that guy out like so. Just move it aside. Release the pry bar. In case you're wondering where it is, I stuck the pry bar. It came in from the back over here. And I stuck it into the hole over here with the hook end up inside there. Because if you do it the opposite way, it wants to slip out and, you know, help break your arms. Now what you're going to do is push on the caliper with your left hand. Take your right hand and just wiggle the CV shaft off. Then you can just slide it down like this, let it sit in this area, and now you're going to take your hammer, or your hammer, or whatever, and smash on the other end to get it out. Pull the shaft, of course, you don't want it falling out, and then give it a few love taps. Seriously, Bluetooth? Anyhow, grab the shaft, as I was saying. Do some tap, 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 tap. Pull this guy back out. Okay, well, we're loose there, so we can pull it out by hand. Make sure we're in frame there. Yeah, that's good enough. There we go. Make sure you watch that wonderful ABS sensor. You don't want to get any crap on it. Now let's head over to the bench. We'll talk about shaft length, girth, and compare shafts. Now, when looking at CV shafts, it is very important to look at the shaft length as well as the width of the shaft. Uh, the girth is very important to identify to make sure that you don't have some ridiculous shaft that is not going to fit in the prescribed space that is there on the car. What you need to do is start in the middle here. Obviously, a couple of millimeters here and there isn't going to make much of a difference. And if it does, well, that's that's not your problem um well maybe it might be your problem nonetheless obviously if it doesn't work for your application you're going to end up swapping it out with regards to this particular shaft the length itself always have to check it whenever the shaft is compressed and the way to do that is to stand them up make sure that this portion of the shaft has no grease in the bottom of the barrel on your new shaft so you got to smash it down a little bit sometimes some help with a rubber hammer is needed in this case i've already checked everything we are good to go so you can see there it is fully compressed and the length is the same from here to basically here obviously i know you can't see it on camera nonetheless god the shaft's disgusting it is important to compare this side of the shaft as well. Make sure your ABS ring is basically the same. Make sure that this section here is the same size. Do not apply any grease or any sort of additive that's gonna help with lubricity to this side. These are an open bearing. And what that means is the roller bearing is open. And the only thing should be in there is the grease that was put in by the factory. If you put any grease in this area, you can possibly destroy your bearing which would be a very very bad thing now on your new shaft what you can do if you're worried about lubricity is you can put a light skim of oil here just to make sure that the seal doesn't get snagged you can also put a very little bit of anti-seize around the front here so as you put the shaft in the anti-seize will get pushed towards the back of the shaft that being said once you have confirmed that your shaft is the same what you got to do is shove it back in the hole so my advice like I said, a little bit of anti-seize here and you're good to go. Let's go do that. Uh, just a little bit will do. Don't need all kinds. We're just trying to give it some lubricity. So what this accomplishes essentially is it gives the shaft a little bit of corrosion protection as well as lubricity. So the next time, if you ever have to change this thing or touch it, you're not going to have to heat it up or destroy it or your arms by smashing the thing to death. Trust me, when you're young, it's fun to smash things. But when you're older and you realize that it takes a an impact on your joints, well, you don't want to do that shit anymore. Okay, let's go ahead and shove this in the car.
One thing you want to do is be cognizant of what is going on in this area here. Make sure there's no dirt. Pick it all off. Do not get it into the bearing. It will ruin it. Do not get it onto the seal. Once you're confident that this area here is nice and clean, you can go ahead and put your CV shaft in. Make sure when picking away at any crud or crap that's on your ABS sensor, it doesn't go into your bearing or onto your seal because that will ruin your bearing. Now, get your shaft. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, the camera's right in the way. Wonderful. Slide your shaft in. All right. Push it away from the car, the caliper that is. Let go of my fucking glove, you prick. Use that guy to hold that motherfucker there. There we go. Now just slide this in. Just having a bit of a hard time because, well, I'm in an awkward position and I don't want to hit my seal and have fun with a bad bearing later on in this thing. Shake it in. All right, wonderful. Now what we need to do is line up the opposite end of the shaft. With the opposite end, what you're going to need to do is use your left hand on the caliper to control where your shaft is going to potentially land. As you can see there, we're slightly off. You want to line the hole up for the dowel and then just slide this guy in. In case you weren't uh, convinced about my speech of this nasty crud, it gets everywhere and it is a pain in the ass. That should not be that hard. What's the deal there, guy? Oh, something's going on there. Should slide right in. I'm gonna investigate and wipe my hands off and then I'll be back with an answer. Now, the CV shaft, for whatever reason, was being a little bit stubborn. I don't know why, because usually they just go in. They can be a little bit stiff, but this guy required some love taps on the nose of the CV. So essentially the opposite end got a nice tap with our mallet there, and that did the trick. Uh, you can see here I pounded it a little bit too hard. Now I've got to get my pry bar and set it straight. Let's just pry this baby out here just a little bit. Yeah, that looks good there, I think. Is it? Yeah, that looks good there. Now, getting the pin in there is relatively easy on this side. It's not too, too hard. You can usually just force it in by hand. But uh, on the other side, it's a complete nightmare because the converter's there and, well, it's stupid. So years ago, when doing these stupid things quite often, I just took a piece of round stock. This is, uh, I think it's a rocker arm bar that I use for my head. I just drilled out that little section there and guess what that holds? Yes, that's right, boys and girls. It holds that shit perfectly. And now, all I gotta do is, well, I usually line it up just like that, but unfortunately my camera is in the way, so we're gonna just take this guy and smash it. This makes things so, so much easier than what you have to do, which is hold it somehow and then get a punch and smash the thing. Yeah, we're just gonna get a punch. Now all you gotta do is just get a punch. You don't need anything this big. This is a CV shaft. It's just the length that I'm looking for. Ooh, it's gonna end up colliding with my CV. So I gotta get a smaller one. Just wanna do it till it's flush. And there we go. We are good to go on this end. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's not really hard, nothing to it. I actually like this design. I, th I appreciate this more so than the uh, CV C-clip bullshit because those can get stuck in there pretty good and they're pretty annoying. But problem with this guy was some of them start to get wallowed out and basically they can cause a bit of vibration. And it also is not uh, uh, the best for torque because it's not held as securely. Anyhow, no one really cares about that. Next step, get your pry bar. Stick it in through here. Oh, you can't fit it like that now. There we go. Now just pry it down. 
move that joint in the place. Whatever you do, do not get your hand stuck between the joint and this guy coming up without the support of the pry bar because that will hurt like a mother. You do that once or twice, you learn very quickly. Okay, so as you can see, I have a cotter pin as well as a hole to put that cotter pin in the ball joint. The joint is still good. You can see my stand in the distance there. It was a bit of a pain in the ass to remedy this issue. Hopefully you don't have one. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and torque it. The torque spec for this thing is 36 foot pounds or 49 Newton meters. Now, once you have torqued it, if the hole lines up, you can go ahead and put in your cotter pin. If it does not, continue twisting. Do not exceed 60 degrees. Then slide your cotter pin in. Mother, there we go. I just bend it over. Now, with regards to this, what I had to do was not only drill out the hole, and this is why I have my stand to keep that thing from moving around when I was pushing on the bowl joint with the drill bit. Basically, I tapped around with a punch trying to knock it loose. That wasn't happening, so I ended up drilling out the hole with a one eighth of an inch drill bit. Of course, we did the back and forth to try to ream out as much rust as possible. And then we also tapped the threaded portion. It looked like it was galled for some reason. I don't know why. There's obviously been some separation here and some work that's been done because you can see the bashing and some of the marks from whoever smashed it with a hammer. Uh, I don't know what the story was and whatever. We're not going to really find out. Uh, nonetheless, it is fixed. As long as it holds the torque, you are good to go. It is safe. Tapping this if you need to, hopefully not. It is a M12 by 1.25 thread pitch. So make sure you have the appropriate die and whatnot to take care of the job. Yeah, bowl joints, they can be a nightmare sometimes. This one thankfully worked out. Now we can go ahead and deal with our CV shaft. Grab a punch. Preferably at least a quarter inch thick. All right, grab your CV nut, new or old, if it is the stock one, and thread it on. Go ahead, grab a 32 mil and your gun, and ugga dugga it on. Do not go full throttle. We're going to torque it because we're not hacks. Now, what you're going to do, try not to hit the fucking camera. You're going to take your quarter inch punch or something that's thicker that fits between the veins, move it against your wonderful caliper, then grab your socket. Set your torque wrench to 151 foot pounds or 216 newton meters. Now, if you have a friend, you don't need to use the punch. However, I don't have any friends in the shop right now. And there we go, good to go. This guy here, take it, stake it. That's what we're trying to do here, guy. Whoa. I don't know if I mentioned, but uh, usually, I don't know what it is. <laughs> uh, whenever you slide this guy in, make sure it's not in the way of one of the studs because it just makes it a bit harder to stake. Yeah, we're done. Get your wheel, slap that shit on the car. Thread your bolts up by hand. Push your wheel into the hub and fire away. Now, get your torque wrench. Set it to 65 foot pounds or 88 newton meters. Well, that's pretty much all she wrote. All that's left to do is to take it for a test drive, make sure all is well in Subaru land and you are good to go. Hopefully you found the video entertaining as well as insightful. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. And as always, thank you for watching. We will see you in the next one. What we're doing in today's video is we are going to be replacing the driver's side CV shaft. We have a boot, the inner boot, which is common on these cars, that has basically left the building. That sounds stupid. Left the building. It's a fucking car, Jimmy. God damn it. What we're doing in today's video is we are going to be replacing the CV shaft on the front driver's side of this vehicle. This thing here. This thing here what? I don't know what to fucking say there, guy. What we're doing in today's video is we're going to be replacing the front driver's side CV shaft on this Outback. Why we are doing it is... There's that cocksucker compressor. I'll be back. What we need to do is, of course... I don't know what the fuck we need to do. I'm just... 
putting in filler words and shit. Let's start this over again, get to the fucking point, and get this shit over with. What we're doing in today's video is we are replacing the driver's side CV shaft on this 2001 Outback. What we are... Why? Why? Why the fuck is this so hard right now, dude? Honestly, when you're angry and you're pissed off, your fucking brain is just on fire, dude. Like, it is tough. And given the climate that we're currently living in in Canada and the amount of taxes and shit that we have to pay, it is hard to stay goddamn sane and not angry. It is dude everybody thinks canada is such a nice country well you know what there are nice portions to it but let me tell you there's a lot of crap and grief that canadians face at the hands of our incompetent useless government and let me be very clear blue red or orange or whatever other color they all suck and until we stand together and hold them accountable for the stupidity that they you know put us through whether it be over taxation or selling off all of our goddamn resources and having canadians get nothing really in return other than a good paying job is just ridiculous and yeah the biggest problem that we face is not our crap tacular governments it's the fact that my people canadians have become so complacent and don't stand together with each other for our rights for our privileges for our freedoms for being overtaxed and overburdened you know so yeah it, it's extremely fucking hard to stay happy in in Canada. It's contrary to what all these stupid fucking studies say. It is not a happy place to be anymore. And most Canadians, damn right, aren't fucking happy. So, you know, anyhow, I gotta get through this fucking video. It's bullshit. You know, sometimes I think I should have did a fucking political channel as opposed to an automotive channel. Besides getting more views, you know, it, it would feel better because, you know, at least I'd help with waking people up you know but um anyhow if you'd like to see that sort of comment you can leave uh a comment below and maybe i'll give you some of my opinions and you know <clears throat> i can tell you guys if you're out there looking at coming over to canada uh, now's not the time definitely not the time to come over to canada it's actually it's in pretty bad shape um we have idiot leaders who have somehow managed to destroy the country um and yeah everybody can blame justin trudeau which he definitely is at fault but uh if you think that um you know one moron is uh, capable of doing this much stupidity on his own i'm pretty sure if you listen to him talk he's not that bright to think up half the harebrained ideas that he's put forth and that we now have as law or taxes in this country so you know like i say we need to stick together i'm not saying i know everything that's for damn sure none of us do but uh regardless of whether we uh, uh stick together or not at some point we will be together uh, we're either going to be in the shits together or we're going to be together trying to take back our freedoms and not be overburdened with stupid taxes that don't make any goddamn sense. Yeah, so here's to you, government. <sighs> Fuck. Cocksuckers. What we're doing in today's video is we are going to be replacing the driver's side front all right, my neighbor's running some shitbox that is extremely loud, so I will be back, right? Take 15,000 of this fucking goddamn shot with the, with the prices. The fuck are they doing over there? Make sure you get mixer, mixer, and then we'll show you exactly what you start, what you need to, what the fuck? That, I'm just in the fucking complaining mood today. Uh, how we're going to be tackling this is, I don't remember, to be honest, whether it is the automatic transmission. Okay, fuck that shit. We're not going to deal with that stupid compressor. I'll be back. 32 mil. You can also see the, why the fuck is that out of focus? Usually there is some sort of um, either hex or triple square uh, fastener that's cut out in the bowl joint stuff. Fuck that. We're going to fucking compressor. Looks like some uh, fuckery has taken place. Um, I can't say that. <laughs> why, is he, why do you keep fucking moving? Stop moving. Push on the brake caliper and push the spindle assembly all the way away from... Well, all the way? We're not turning the steering, Jimmy. Seriously, Bluetooth, right in the middle of my fucking video, you prick mother. The fuck is my anti seize, motherfucker? Where's my anti seize at? I hate it when these fucking things grow legs and walk the fuck off, mother. Well, today's one of those days I should have just stayed the fuck home, boy. With the opposite end, 
what you're doing, what are you gonna do? Just gonna go into the big camshaft uh, of an inch, inch, inch. Now what we need to do is stake the nut so it doesn't, doesn't, oh God. Set it to 66 Newton meters. Oh, oopsies, fuck. Set it to 65 foot pounds or 88 newton me what the fuck was it now man all that's left to do is for you to take this thing for a taste of thing ding -a -ding -a -ding -a. hopefully you found the video interest interesting but but but, but, but go into the big what are you gonna do there